Welcome to the second lecture of Biomathematics. In this lecture, we will be studying about graphs and functions. So, this is the second lecture where we will discuss more about graphs and more about functions. As you might remember in the first lecture, we mentioned that we actually basically describe the idea of functions and we said that functions and graphs are related and we also showed that many of the biological system many of the we also discussed many graphs that you would get in a typical biology experiment so there are growth curves there are there was molecular motors walking along uh, microtubules and many other cases so in this lecture we will go and try and understand some of those graphs so the mathematical idea behind those graphs or the equations behind those graphs is what we will try and understand in this lecture so essentially in this what we discussed last time is as seen in the slide we said last time that experimental cells the relation between experimental cells and graph so when you do an experiment what you do is basically you get a set of data and you plot this data as a graph so you get some for example like let's say you are measuring the length of actin as a function of free monomer concentration then the more the concentration the more the growth speed is the actin will grow faster so you can for example plot the growth velocity versus the concentration so you will have when you do this experiment you vary the concentration and you measure the growth velocity or you could vary the concentration and measure the average length of the filament so depending on which experiment you are doing you will be getting a table where concentration is in one axis and length or something else in the other axis so basically you will get a two table with two columns and you plot this this data points that you get into a graph the reason you are plotting into a graph is as we said last time is that a graph can convey much more information than a set of tables or a bunch of statements can convey and it's very it's quantitative it can precisely say a few things about the system that we are studying so in this lecture so as we said there is some relation between graph and equation so every graph that you plot can be represented by an equation so this equation could be very complicated but uh, in principle every graph that you plot can be fitted or represented by an equation and understanding that equation basically will help us understand the biological system in more detail so that is our aim that is why we understand the equations we want to study the equations and therefore understand the system biological system of our interest in a better way so as we see here in this lecture we will learn how simple equations can be plotted as graphs so we will take many simple equations and see how we can plot them and how can we connect this to a graph so graph and equations that's what we are going to uh, study in this in this lecture so as we said before to plot a graph you need an x axis and a y axis so some value some column which is x axis which we will plot in the x axis and some other column which we will plot in the y axis so a relation there is a relation between this quantities in the x axis and the quantity in the y axis for example there is a relation between concentration and the length of actin filament so or in other words there is uh, the position of something is related to time so there is a relation between what we plot typically in a graph in the x axis and what we plot in the y axis so this relation is mathematically called a function so i we said this last time that function is essentially is basically the relation between what we plot in the x axis and what we plot in the y axis so the what is the simplest relation that you can think of the simplest relation that you can think of is nothing but y is equal to x so if we define 
a function as the quantity is how a quantity in the x y axis is related to the quantity in the x axis the simplest relation is basically y equal to x. Now, how do we plot this y equal to x as a graph? So, we will go and learn this today. So, let us say that you have a column with x values and y values. So, what are the simplest values x equal to 0, y equal to 0. So, like when x is 0, y is 0 as you can see in the slide when x is 0, y is 0, when x is 1, y is 1, when x is 2, y is 2, when x is 3, y is 3, 4, 4, 5, 5 and 6, 6. So, this is a very easy point. So, like it is easy to understand because for every x value, the y value is the same. So, this is the simplest function you can think of and let us see how this is plotted. So, see the graph what we have plotted here. So, in the x axis we have x which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. In the y axis again we have y values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Here the first point the red square field square red field square are the points corresponding to this values. So, the first value x equal to 0, y equal to 0. So, the 0, 0 is represented by a point here and the next one the 1 1 in this table. So, what does it mean is that for x value 1 correspondingly the y value is 1. So, this is what it means for x value 1 the corresponding y value is 1. Similarly, for x value 2 the corresponding y value has to be 2. So, if you start from x equal to 2 which is this the corresponding y value is 2. So, you can see x the x value is 2, y value is 2. Similarly, when x value is 3, y value is 3, the corresponding y value is 3. The simple as you all know, the way to plot a graph is keep putting dots for each pair of values and you can connect them. So, there is some details about how to connect these values, which we will discuss completely in a different set of lectures. But for simplicity today, let us connect this values with a line. So, basically what you will get is essentially a line. So, this set of set of dots connects like a line. So, y equal to x is a straight line. So, this is the simplest straight line you can think of y equal to x. So, what does it mean when? So, as you can see y equal to x is a line which goes from through 0 0. So, we learn the simplest graph and simplest function. So, what does it what do we say here y is basically a function of x. So, typically this is showed in different ways in different books. Some books say y equal to x, some other lecture would say y of x equal to x, some other place you would see f of x equal to x. As you can see here all this means the same thing. So, when you say y bracket x, what does it mean is, is that essentially is that y is a function of y depends on x. So, the y value varies depending on how x value varies. Similarly, when you say f bracket x, that means the f the function f stands for function and the function depends on the x value and how does it depend? It depends like x. So, the this is the simplest way of saying so, this is one way of saying y equal to x or there are three different ways which you can see in different places as you for example, if you see a read a book. So, the book would have written y of x equal to x or some books would write f of x equal to x. So, all of this is essentially what we just saw this curve all of this means this curve that means for a given value of x there is a y value which is the same. So, now let us look at the next function. So, the next function is y equal to 2 x. So, when you say y equal to 2 x, what does it mean? The y value is twice that of the x value. So, let us look at this table which is here. For x value of 0, we have y value which is 0. When the x value is 1, y value is 2 which is double. 
So, that is what this 2 x means twice that of the x value. When x value is 2, the y value is 4, which is 2 times 2 is 4. Similarly, 3, 6, 4, 8, 5, 10. So, for every x value, the y value is 2 times that of the x value. This is what y equal to 2 x means and let us see how is it plotted. So, in the plot here, you have x axis and y axis. So, for every number in the x axis, there is a corresponding y number. So, there are this vertical and horizontal lines. So, they basically as you know, you might you know from your school that how to plot a graph and for every x value, there is a corresponding y value. So, let us have a look. In the, if, you have, if you look at this, you will see that when x equal to 0, y is 0. For x equal to 1, y is 2. So, let us look at this graph. When x value is 1, if you go from starting from 1, if you go up, you will reach the point which is corresponding to 2. Similarly, for x equal to 2, the corresponding y value is 4. For x equal to 3, the corresponding y value is 6. When x equal to 5, the corresponding y value is 10. Similarly, 6 has corresponding value 12, 7 has 14. So, basically we have put a dot in for each pair of these values and connected them. So, this is basically another straight line. So, y x equal to y is equal to x is a straight line, y is equal to 2 x is also a straight line as you can see here and in, in the coming classes we will try and understand what exactly is the difference between y equal to x and y is equal to 2 x because this is important. Uh, and uh, so, but as, as of now, let us compare this y values, y these two curves. So, let us look at the next slide where we have compared y is equal to x and y is equal to 2 x. So, in the red curve here, as you see here, red is y is equal to, as what is written on the top is wrong. What actually is that the green curve is y equal to x as is marked here and the red curve is y is equal to 2 x which is which is shown in the red. So, what is shown in the top is change the color the color code is not correct. So, y equal to x is shown in green and y equal to 2 x is shown in red. So, as you can see there is a difference when y is x is 10 the y value is 10 for the y equal to x curve and when x is equal to 10 the y value is 20 for the red curve which is y is equal to 2 x. So, as you see in the graph, the graph is marked y equal to x and 2 x. So, you can see that the corresponding values for each of this x value, you can see corresponding x value and 2 x value and you can see that the, the second the red curve values are twice that of the green values. So, this is the basic difference between x. So, uh, always 2 x is larger than x which we know which is evident from the graph except for x equal to 0 values. So, we will come back to these two curves in comparison more in the coming lectures, but so right now we understood that y equal to x is a straight line, y equal to 2 x is also a straight line. So, when so in general y equal to 3 x if you plot it could be another straight line y equal to 4 x is another like straight line. So, y is equal to any constant times x is all a straight line and all of them will pass through 0. So, in general we could say that y equal to m x is basically a equation of a straight line that passing through y equal to 0 and when you say y equal to m x where m is any number. So, 1 x, 2 x, 3 x, 4 x, it could be even minus 5 x, my m could be in negative number and we will see later uh, how this when m is a negative number, how does this graph changes, but for, for today let us stick for m equal to, uh, today we will stick for m values positive, we will only take m is equal to 1, 2 or positive values. and we, we can try taking negative values and try plotting it and see how it is different from the values we saw. So, so far we saw that y equal to a constant times x is a straight line, 
that is passing through y equal to 0. Now, let us see if you add a constant to this, let us say y is equal to 2 x plus some constant, how does it change? In the next graph, you will see this. So, let us look the next graph. So, next graph, what we have plotted is y is equal to 2 x plus 4 is in the red, the red dots represent a curve which is y equal to 2 x plus 4 and the green dot is the curve which we already saw which is y is equal to 2 x. So, this is basically this graph is basically a comparison between y is equal to 2 x which can be written as 2 x plus 0 and y equal to 2 x plus 4 which is the red the red dots and the line uh, line points represents 2 x plus 4. So, as you can see at x equal to 0 the green has value 0. On the other hand the red has value 4. So, what does it mean is that the curve y is equal to 2 x and y equal to 2 x plus 4 are shifted. They are shifted by certain amount the value 4 here. So, the difference between y equal to some constant times x and constant times x plus some other constant is that they are shifted by some value. So, it is only in a the difference is only a shift as you can see in the slide as you saw in the slide. So, in general any curve which is y is equal to m x plus c where m and c are some constants will remain a straight line. It is just that it will it can it can shift it from. So, the it could pass through different values in the y axis, but does not matter whatever it be the values it take it will be a straight line. So, that is that comes. So, we, since we now we understood functions like y equal to x 2 x 2 x plus 4. So, let us generalize this y is equal to m x plus c. So, let us see the, the slide here which says y is equal to m x plus c is equation of a straight line passing through y equal to c. You saw that m value as 1 and 2 and c value as 0 and 4. The previous slides where we saw and that this, this is a general equation of a straight line. When x and y are related using this equation, the equation of the kind y is equal to m x plus c, we will say that y is a linear function of x. So, when the, ter the term linear itself means it is like going along a line. So, when somebody says y is a linear function of x, what they mean is that the relation between y and x, if you plot a graph, it will look like a straight line. When somebody else says a linear function, it only means that uh, the, the relation is a straight line. If you plot a graph, you will get a straight line. When two quantities are linearly related, when you plot a graph, you will get a straight line. So, you could think of many examples where things are straight lines. For example, uh, you uh, for example, if you have a circle, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So, the radius and the circumference is related linearly. So, so you could take another example from biology. So, let us take an example from biology where a molecular motor is walking along a microtubule. So, in the cells microtubules are typically starting from uh, near the centrosome and going to the periphery, periphery of the cell. So, from the center to the periphery. So, microtubule will be walking from one end to the other end of the microtubule. So, if we plot the distance from the center to where the microtubule is traveling, where the sorry, where the motor is traveling, you will in some limit in some cases you will get a straight line or average the average distance a motor traveled from the center is essentially uh, and if you plot with time you will get like uh, you will get essentially a straight line so let us look the graph so what is plotted in the y axis in the graph is basically the average distance the kinesine traveled from the center versus time and you get a straight line and this equation is y is equal to 
v t plus some constant, where v is the velocity of the motor and c is the distance of the motor. So, this you have to keep in mind that this is not the instantaneous distance, but this is the average distance. What does it mean is that you do many experiments and look at the average value, you will get the straight line. So, this is the one example from biology where you have a linear relation between the position and time connected through velocity. We will come back to this example and understand this in detail in another context in another lecture, but in this lecture it is, is enough to say that there are many functions there y and x two quantities in biology are related linearly and when they plot you will get a straight line. So, you could think of many many experiments you did where you got a straight line in each of this case the relation between the quantities in the x axis and the y axis are linear. So, now that we understand the linear function let us go and try and understand the next case which is a quadratic function. So, what is the what is the next case? So, we, once we understand y equal to x the next simplest thing is y is equal to x square. So, let us go to the case y equal to x square. So, let us have a look at the table. So, when you say y equal to x square what does it mean? For every x value there is a corresponding y value which is square of that. So, the square of 0 is 0 itself, the square of 1 is 1 itself, the square of 2 is 4, the square of 3 is 9, the square of 4 is 16, square of 5 is 25. So, we have 5 values and 5 x values and 5 y values. The y values is basically the square of x values. So, now let us see how do we if we plot this how would it look. So, before seeing the plot think about it. So, we had y equal to x as a straight line. Now, how would it the y equal to x square would look like? So, think for a minute and then have a look at the slide here. So, what you have here is basically for every x value you have plotted the y value as we tabulated here and what you would get is not a straight line but a curved line. So, there is a curve, there is a curvature. So, the y equal to x square is slightly curved. We will compare soon the y equal to x and y equal to x square, but you can clearly see this curvature and for every value of x you have a y value. So, y equal to 1 has 1, 2 has 4 and 3 has 9 and so on and so forth. So, you can see from the graph that y equal to x square is a is a is like is curved it is not a straight line. So, uh, as you see here this is how we plot y equal to x square and if we plot the negative part. So, we had only taken positive values for x, but if we take negative values for x you would also get similar. So, for example, let us have a look at this graph y equal to minus 2 you have 4 minus 2 square is 4, similarly plus 2 square is also 4. So, this curve is essentially symmetric to about 0. If you go to the right of the 0 or left of the 0, there is the positive values or negative values, y values are the same. When y is 4, there are 2 points. When y is 9, there are 9 is just below 10, 9 there are 2 values, because minus 3 square is also 9 plus 3 square is also 9. For 16, minus 4 square is 16, plus 4 square is 16. For 25, there are 2 values, because minus 5 square is 25, plus 5 square is 25. So, essentially what does this say is that y equal to x square is a symmetric function, does not matter x is negative or positive you have same values for y. So, it looks symmetric around x equal to 0. If you take x equal to 0 as a vertical line and if you look both sides it looks similar is symmetric. So, this is basically simplest quadratic function is y equal to x square. Now, let us compare. So, we, we saw 
y equal to x and y equal to 2 x and we saw that 2 x is large goes above y equal to x in the graph. Now, let us compare y equal to x and y sorry y equal to x square and y equal to 2 x square. So, let us have a look at this graph here. So, when y is equal to x square you have this green line here which go this is y equal to x square and the red line is y equal to 2 x square. As you expect y equal to 2 x square goes above y equal to x square because this red values are twice as that of the green values. For example, let us have a look at 3. When it is 3 x equal to 3 x square is 9 where y equal to x square the green curve this point is at 9 which is just above 8 you can see here just below 10. Then 2 x square is at 18 because 2 times 9 is 18. So, this is this is at 18 and but at 0 both x square and 2 x square are 0 values. So, starting from same point 0 they diverge they go to different values as we go along the x axis. So, this is the comparison of y equal to x square and y equal to 2 x square. So, now we learn two functions a linear function y equal to x and a quadratic function y equal to x square. Now, let us compare let us plot this values in the same graph let us see what do we get. So, let us compare y equal to x and y equal to x square and see the graph here in the slide. As you can see here the blue curve is y equal to x is a straight line, the red is y equal to x square. So, the red is curved and blue is straight and the interesting thing to note here is that below 1. So, this is the value at 1 at 1 as you can see x and x square have same value at 1 1 square is 1 itself. So, this the curve this curves meet at 1 they also have same values at 1, 0 because x 0 and 0 square is same 0, but between 0 and 1 the linear function which is y equal to x is larger than x square. Above 1 y, to y equal to x square is larger than y equal to x. So, x square is larger than x when x is larger than 1 and x is larger than x square when x the x is smaller than 1. So, at x equal to 1 they cross each other. So, this is an interesting point that you should keep in mind that when you compare x and x square function having higher power will have a lower value below 1. We will see this when we compare x and x square and x cube later, but always keep in mind when x is less than 1 x square is smaller than x. It, this is uh, as you can uh, you can see you can see 0 0.5 has a square 0 0.25 0 0.5 square is 0.25 and we know that 0 0.25 is smaller than 0 0.5 so when you when we plot when you take any value of x below 1 and plot the x square will be always below the x smaller than x so this is one interesting thing and important thing to keep in mind. This will be very useful at some stages later and but above 1 always x square wins x square is larger. So, this is some interesting nice things about functions one uh, one should keep in mind and this will be very useful as we go along. So, once we understand as we saw last uh, previously we had seen that we have we represent y equal to x y equal to x square we had two functions now and as we saw previously that we represented this in different ways we represented it as y equal to x y of x equal to x and f of x equal to x similarly you can represent in a different way here three different ways we can represent like in some books you would see y equal to x y of x equal to x f of x equal to x similarly in the x square case also you could see as you see in the slide here some people would represent y of x equal to x square 
f of x equal to x square, but as I said before all of this mean the same thing. This all means that the y varies like square of x. So, the y or the function f varies like the square of x. So, this is some as you see look different books you would see different things, but all please understand that they all mean the same thing. So, now that we understand a quadratic function think where all have you seen this square x square behavior the quadratic the quadratic function have you seen it somewhere? I am sure you have and the simplest thing is area. Area is square of radius 4 pi r square it is a formula which you remember from your school days. So, for example, the area the surface area of an organism the surface area means if you have a spherical organism like the area the surface area is basically 4 pi r square again and this is important because as you see here the basal metabolic rate for example, of an animal is proportional to its surface area. So, basal metabolic rate will be a quadratic function of the radius the more the radius the metabolic rate could differ. So, it differed quadratically. Similarly, the energy stored in a spring mo like molecule is half k x square. So, where the x is basically how much the spring is stressed. As you can see the more as we saw here in the previously earlier x square had a behavior which like increase like a curve. So, as we as I I can draw here we saw that when we plot x square it was increasing. So, this is let us say half k x square. So, what does it mean? The more stretching is x is the stretching the more you stretch the spring the more energy you need to give to stretch the spring. So, the energy of so, this is true for any molecule if you take any 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 protein and stretch the protein you have to spend more energy. So, this is basically the spring analogy is very useful for different biomolecules and the energy of stretching a biomolecule is quadratic function. So, the elastic stretching energy is a quadratic function. So, this is like metabolic uh, the basal metabolic rate and stretching energy are two examples of a quadratic function. So, now we have seen this x x square and the next simplest function is x cube and let us try and see how if you plot x cube how would it look like. So, have a look at this slide. So, what you have plotted here is basically y equal to x, y equal to x square and y equal to x cube and the red line is y is equal to x, the green line the green curve is y equal to x square and the blue curve is y equal to x cube. And as you can see here at 1 all of them meet that means, the square and cube of 1 is 1 itself. Below 1 highest the x is larger than x square the red is above green, x square is larger than x cube that is the green is above blue. So, as I said previously x square is larger than x cube when x is less than 1, but above 1 as you can see the green gets larger as we go for larger and larger x the green sorry the blue is growing much faster which is x cube and green actually grows faster than the red which means x square is growing faster than x. So, for for example, the for the value 2 here red has a value for n s x equal to 2 y is 2 for y equal to x x square it is 4 for x cube it is 8. And the interesting thing you should note here is the way it grows it grows much faster. So, when I say the blue is growing the when I say blue is growing faster 
what does it mean and i say what does it mean to say grow is an interesting thing and we will come and discuss in another lecture what does it mean to say it grows faster it is it is related to some interesting mathematical a mathematical property of a function and we will discuss this in the coming lectures but just look at this graph and remember let us let us have a look at this graph once more so just remember from this graph that x cube grows faster as we go along this for larger and less x value x cube grows faster x square is not that fast but it's faster than x and x is the slowest so when i say faster growing faster there is some strict definition of this mathematical definition which we will come and discuss another day now we got introduced to this quadrat the cubic function so the cubic function is 4 pi so what is the simplest cubic function that you can think of the volume so the volume of a sphere for example is 4 by 3 pi r cube we all know so that is the simplest function the cu cubic function is basically 4 by 3 pi r cube which is volume of an organism for example having radius r is 4 by 3 pi r cube so you could think of other examples were the property the biological property goes like a cubic function so now we understand x x square and x cube we could also imagine x power 4 x power 5 x power 6 x power 7 so you could all now that we are familiar with this you could plot all of them and one interest you could also imagine various combinations of all this functions so you could define a new function which is x plus x square so let us have a look at this a new function here let us y is x is what we learned we also learned y is equal to x square you could think of new function which is x plus x square this is a different function you could think of another function which is x minus x square so you can add and subtract this functions and you will get a new different function so one can imagine may then now you could imagine the same thing with x cube so let us say you have y is equal to x plus x square minus x cube or you could say x minus x square plus x cube or you could say y is equal to x minus x square minus x cube plus x power 4 so one could imagine various combinations of all these functions and it turns out that as you can see here most as you will see in this lecture soon that many of the most of the experimental graphs you get when you do an experiment you get very complicated graphs which is very different from what you saw now x x square are simple graphs and but you get a complicated graph many complicated graphs and it turns out that most of these graphs can be represented as a combination of this x x square x cube x bar 4 x bar 5 just like we saw we can appropriately add and subtract these functions and you can get any other function so this is important this is very interesting feature that so this is very important to remember that any graph almost any graph that you get can be obtained by adding or subtracting this x square x cube functions in different ways so what people call it linear combination so the combination of x x square x cube etc etc will give you another function and most of the function that you see in experiments can be represented as a combination also many natural processes that you see can be modeled fitted with this kind of combination of these functions so 
one very common very simple and very commonly seen function is called exponential function so you might have heard of it you might have seen it somewhere e power x is called exponential function so this exponential function essentially can be written as some combination a series of this x x square x cube x4 and all of that so let us see how this exponential function is defined so this is as you can see here exponential function e power x is basically defined as 1 plus x plus x square by 2 plus x cube by 6 plus x power 4 plus 24 x power 4, 4 divided by 24 plus x power 5 divided by 120 plus so on and so forth. So, you can this is an infinite series. So, you have to sum x power 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 you have to, you have to keep summing. So, if you just keep summing you will get this value of e power x. So, where do we stop? So, in the coming slides we will see how where to stop this. So, do we have to sum till infinity is it practical or can we stop at some point? We will discuss this in the coming slides, but as you know e is just a number it is a irrational number which is 2.7 approximated 2.1 2.7 1 8 so on and so forth. So, and e power x is basically this defined in this particular fashion as a combination of this functions x x square x cube x 4 etcetera and this values coefficients 1 over 2, 6, 24 etcetera then just for now just remember that there is some combination some particular combination of x x square x x power 4 etcetera and we will try and understand later that where this combination comes from and so on and so forth, but for now it is sufficient to understand that e power x is defined in this particular fashion e power x is defined as 1 plus x plus x square by 2 plus x cube by 6 plus x power 4 divided by 24 and so on and so forth. So, now let us see how if we plot this function x power e power x how does it look like. So, let us have a look. So, here is what we have plotted is e power x in the y axis and x in the x axis. So, as we did previously we can we, have, we can make a, a table x in the one co x in one column and e power x in the other column and you will you can plot these points and connect them together that is what we have done here. So, each of this point represents some pair of values for example, when x equals 0 e power x is 1 as we can see as we saw in the previous slide if we put x equal to 0 everywhere here all of this this term is 0, this term is 0, this term is 0, this term is 0, this term is 0 you have just 1. So, at x equal to 0 e power x is 1. So, that is why when x equal to 0 you have e power x is 1 and you should remember whenever you see a graph you should remember two things at the two ends how what are the values. So, x equal to 0 it is e power x is 1 as x is equal to infinity or x as x grows e power x grows like it is like it is a curved it is like a curved it is not a straight line and you can see that it is increasing increasing rapidly. So, we will see later that is it larger than x or larger than x square and so on and so forth. So, so as we saw e power x is basically defined as an infinite series. Now, let us ask this question where do we stop this series? Can we stop at x, x square, x, x cube? Is it correct to say that e power x is 1 plus x or is it correct to say that e power x is 1 plus x plus x square by 2? It is not correct always, but at some cases you can approximate e power x with 1 plus x and so on. So, let us look at this next graph here. So, what is plotted here is basically in the y axis you have two curves. So, green and red 
the red is y is equal to 1 plus x, the green is y is equal to e power x. So, when the 1 plus x is a straight line, it is a linear function, e power x is not a straight line, it is a curve. And so, as you can see, very close to 0, they have same values. So, this red and green meet close to 0, but as they go away from 0, they diverge. So, this goes like this and this x 1 plus s goes, goes in this fashion. So, what does it mean? It means that close to 0, e 1 plus x and e power x has same values. So, it is ok to approximate e power x as 1 plus x when x is very close to 0. So, when x is very close to 0, one can say e power x is approximately equal to, that is what this sign means. This sign means approximately equal to, the e power x is approximately equal to 1 plus x when x is very close to 0. Now, if we take little more values like 1 plus x plus x square by 2 plus x cube by 6 and so on, what do we get? So, in this series, so we saw that e power x is a very long series, infinite series. If we take more and more terms, we took two terms, 1 and x, 1 plus, two terms we took and we saw that only when very close to 0, e power x and this 1 plus x matches, then plus x match. Uh, when they are far away from 0, they diverge. So, now let us take a few more terms, 1 plus x plus x square by 2 plus x cube by 6 and so on and so forth and see whether it matches, when you go little more away from 0, whether the value, they, their values are same or not. So, let us have a look at this graph. So, what shown here is that the green is e power x, the red is here 1 plus x plus x square by 2 plus x cube by 6. So, this function, what is shown in this red ellipse, this is what is plotted here as a red line, 1 plus x plus x square by 2 plus x cube by 6 is plotted using a red line and e power x is plotted using a green line. As you can see here, below 1 pretty much all, almost all the places, it, they match the function e power x and this 1 plus x plus x square by 2 plus x cube by 6, they match with each other close to 0 and above 0 0.5 also they match. Like so very close, around 1 they start diverging and e power x goes faster than the sum of this quadratic cubic plus linear functions. So, two things we understand from here is that the more terms we take, the approximation becomes better. So, one could write again that e power x is approximately equal to 1 plus x plus x square plus x square by 2 plus x cube by 6 and the approximation is better here because we took more terms. Previously, we had only two terms and here we had four terms. So, let us compare these two approximations. So, have a look at these graphs and in the x axis, in the left side, we have these two terms 1 plus x. So, the approximation with two terms and in the right, we have approximation with four terms 1 plus x plus x square plus x x square by 2 plus x cube by 6. And you can see that on the right side is much better than what you see on the left side. So, what you learn from is that the more term you take, the function becomes more closer to the e power x. So, if you take all the terms, you get exactly e power x. And you also see that e power x is larger than the more, the higher the x, the e power x wins, e power x is faster than any of these combinations. Like if you take this sum, e power x is faster, it grows faster, it is growing faster in a faster pace. So, we will come and see what does it mean to say that 
it is faster, slower, etc. But what we saw so far today is basically we studied, we we saw some math simple mathematical functions like y equal to x, y equal to x square, y equal to x cube. We also saw that the combination of x square, x cube, x etcetera gives us some other function and some no well known mathematical functions like e power x can be represented as a combination of these functions. And in the coming lectures, we will see how this combination give rise to some very well known functions in mathematics. So, today we will stop at this point to and in the coming class, we will take some biological examples and we will see that how this example biological functions that we plot as typically graph in experimental data can be represented as a combination of these functions. And we will learn many more interesting functions, uh, which is very important relevant in biology and we will discuss their relevance. So, so, to summarize the relation between quantities that we plot in the x and y axis is called a function and we learned many simple functions like x, x square, x cube etcetera. And we also saw that some known functions like exponential of x e power x can be represented as a combination of simple functions like x, x square, x cube etcetera. And in the coming class, we will see many more interesting functions and see how they are related to some of the known biological experimental data. So, some experimental data we get from biology experiments can be represented by as a combination of the simple functions and we will see them in the next class. Thank you.